All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys have had a relaxing past few weeks. I hope you had a good holiday if you're in uh, America. And uh, if you're not, I hope you're just doing well. Um, it's been a few weeks since my last video. Um, I've been doing some stuff uh, on my system. I've been doing some stuff away from my system. I have been doing stuff for work. I've been doing stuff for school. I've just been super swamped. So I apologize for the delay. But one of the things I've been doing is actually getting myself completely set back on void. Um, I have still have my Artix partition set up, but I've basically squeezed it down to like next to nothing. Um, I'm going to be getting rid of it completely here before too long, and I am back on void. Um, it's been a long time coming, but I have missed it, and um, I just already feel like I'm back at home. So I did want to get a video out because if you look at uh, my screen here in just a second, um, you'll see that I am running Hyperland, and I've had a few people ask me about setting up Hyperland on void, so I figured I'd put a video out and we would get Hyperland set up. So let me go ahead and switch uh, views here. And uh, let's just kind of go over what I got going on. So if you see, I got all my window animations here. If we transfer screens, our workspaces, you can see everything works. Everything works great. In fact, I want to actually go so far to say that Hyperland has worked better for me on Void than it did on Artix. Um, I had it set up on Artix. I was using it pretty regularly, switching between that and DK. Um, and it worked, and it worked well. But the one thing I had issues with, um, for the most part was key bindings, global bindings in Artix. For some reason, they just did not want to work. They work spectacularly on um, on Void. I have literally no issues issues with them. So what I was doing wrong on Artix, I don't know, um, but it, it wasn't working for me. But here we are on Void. I do have Hyperland up and running. So let's go ahead and sit down. We're going to create a Void virtual machine. We're going to install Void, get it up and going. We're going to get the source packages put together, and we are going to install Hyperland, and we're going to do it all from nothing. So let's go ahead and close all these out, and let's go ahead and launch my virtual machine launcher, and we are going to add a VM, and it's going to be Void plus Hyperland, and we are going to give it six CPUs. Um, let's do 8192 for the memory. Uh, name of ISO is void.iso. Uh, disk size, we're just going to do 30. Uh, Linux 2020 for the type of OS and UEFI. Um, we're going to make this a UEFI uh, virtual machine. So let's go ahead and launch that. Now, um, I am going to be pausing quite frequently during this video because there is some steps that take quite a long time. So. Just be aware that there are going to be some pauses and some breaks, but we're going to go through this start to finish, and we're going to get it uh, uh, get it done good for you, so you can actually get it working on your system. So, we're booting into the Void Live ISO right now uh, to create a virtual machine, and we will start with the basics. So, let's go ahead and log in. We are going to do root for the login, and we're going to do Void Linux for the password. We are going to clear the screen, and we are now going to run Void Installer. Now, I'm going to run through this super quick because I already have a void installation video out there. Um, so I'm just going to blast through this, but feel free to pause the video or whatever if you're trying to follow along. So, um, okay, we're going to click OK. We're going to set the keyboard and we want English. Now we're going to check the network. Um, we're going to say yes, network is working properly. Uh, set the source installation. We're going to do it from the network because I don't want the ISO packages on there. Um, this is something new with the void ISO. Um, it allows you to select your mirror. Um, and the last ISO I used in my last video, it didn't let you do this. Um, so this is just kind of a newer feature that it gives you. Um, so uh, just a heads up, I will be doing a void install, or not install, excuse me, a void documentation website. Um, just kind of some basic information about void, doing a video on that coming up. So let's select our mirror. Um, okay, we're gonna do in North America, and we're just gonna say the Chicago mirror is fine. So we've selected that. It's gonna take a minute and set that up, okay. Now we're gonna set our host name. We're gonna call it void VM, and we're gonna set our locale is going to be ENUTF8, uh, which is going to be right there, ENUS UTF8. Now our time zone is going to be in America, and it's going to be in Chicago. So let's set that. We're going to set our root password, give it a super secret password that no one in the world will ever be able to figure out. We're going to start a user account now. We're just going to set that to our username. Uh, for me, I'm just going to do Jake and then our login password, super secret password for that as well. And now we're going to leave our group membership alone because we're pretty much set up for everything we need there. Um, the bootloader, let's go ahead and set up the bootloader. We're going to put it on our 30 gigabyte uh, virtual disk. Um, graphical terminal, yes. 
now let's partition. Um, so we're going to partition that graphical um, drive, or excuse me, that virtual drive. And we're going to use CF disk to do this. Now I walk through this uh, option right here, this uh, little discussion here in my other video as well. Since we're doing an EFI setting, UEFI, we're going to uh, uh, go ahead and use that second paragraph there. But we're going to use GPT. We're going to set up the free space. And it's going to be 1 gig for the boot. Um, I know that's excessive, but who cares? <laughs> we're going to do type is going to be EFI. And we're going to create another one. It's going to be 9 gig. Um, that type is going to be Linux root x86-64 and we're going to do another new partition and that's going to take up the remainder. That type is going to be home. I'm not going to do swap. This is a virtual machine and I don't really care. So, oops, not dump. Let's go ahead and write and we're going to say yes to write. It is now written and we're going to quit. So now we're going to set up our file system. So for our boot uh, partition, we need FAT32. We're going to set it to boot slash EFI. Click OK. Yes, we want to add that. Our second partition is going to be ext4. It's going to be set at root. OK. And our third partition is going to be ext4 as well, and it's going to be root home. And we are going to click OK. Um, we are done, and now we are going to install. And we're going to click Yes. Now this is going to take a couple minutes to install, and so I'm going to put you on pause, and I will be back shortly. Okay, we have got the install complete here. You can see down we've got 133 downloaded, 133 installed, zero updated, and 133 configured. So let's go ahead and select enter. It's gonna go ahead and run through this process. It's gonna take a second, but it should reboot us back in here um, and have a good, nice, brand new, fresh void installation on our virtual machine. So <coughs> give it a second here and it will have us all ready to go. So we're applying installer settings, and yes, we want to reboot the system, so here we go. Now, when we get in here, I'm going to try something different from what I normally do, and it might break things, and it might not work, so keep your fingers crossed, but uh, I'll explain when I get to it. So we're going to go ahead and boot into our uh, void session and our super secret password. Let's clear the screen. Now, first things we need to do is we need to... Uh, create a place to put our uh, void source packages. You can put them wherever you would like. I personally create a .local slash pkgs. <clears throat> so we are going to do mkdir. Actually, first things first, let's do set font um, dash d. There you go. I should be able to read that now, so let's clear the screen. Um, I'm going to do mkdir, and we are going to do a oops, .local. Um, and now I am going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do pkgs and hit enter. Now I'm going to cd into dot local pkgs and hit enter and clear the screen again. So I've now created a place to put my void source packages. Now we're going to go ahead and clone into them. Um, I don't necessarily know that you need to go through all this process to get them all on there or if you can just kind of set things up and prep for them to use the template. But anyway, um, we have to use a void source template because if we come over here, and we go to Hyperlens website, um, which by the way, they have a new website and it is pretty slick looking. Um, so let's go to the wiki. And if we go to installing uh, Hyperland right there, and we click on Void Linux here, it has an asterisk next to it because it says it's not available for Void Linux from the official repositories, which is true. Um, Hyperland doesn't build against tag WL roots. However, template files are available from a third party. This is the third party I got them from. It seems to be working fine. I haven't seen any issues with it. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, so it, it works great. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So we are using a void source template. So let's go back to Workspace ONE here and let's go ahead and get set up our void source packages. So what we need to do is we need to uh, do a sudo xpps-install. Uh, we need git, we're going to need vim and I am gonna install um, kitty as well because that is the terminal emulator that X, or not X, but the Hyperland um, is configured with. So, enter our super secret password. Um, we're gonna go ahead and download and install those. Uh, this might take a second, but uh, uh, shouldn't be too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you on pause and I will be back momentarily. Okay, and there we go. We now have Vim, Git, and Kitty installed. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. And what we're going to do now is we are going to do a git clone, and we are going to do https colon slash slash github.com. 
and we're going to do void Linux slash void packages.git and hit enter. Now it's going to clone into that and as you can see this thing has a lot of packages. So it is going to take quite a bit of time. So what I'm going to do now is again I'm going to put you on hold here. I'm going to pause the video. Um, I'm going to let this do its thing so you don't have to sit through this whole process watching and we'll be back with you shortly. All right thanks a lot. Okay, and we are now done um, cloning into the Git or the uh, void packages for source packages. Anyway, <sighs> sorry, it's late. <laughs> we are done uh, cloning the void source packages repository onto our system. So now that we have that set up, what we're going to do is if we go back over to our second workspace here, and if we click on that third-party link from on the Hyperland website for um, or in the Hyperland wiki for the void Linux template, it takes you to the page. This gentleman right here, McReynell. Um, he has this repo. You can see it's fairly updated. Um, actually, he's updated it last month. So he's, he's keeping up to date on it so far. So it is definitely um, one that's worth using. So let's go back over to workspace number one here to our VM. And we are going to now uh, get clone. And it's uh, HTTPS colon slash slash github.com. And it's forward slash. And his name is capital M-A-K-R-E-N-N-E-L. So McReynell, and it is Hyperland stat, or slash void dot git. And hit enter, and it's going to go ahead and clone into that. Now if I do an ls, you can see I've got Hyperland void, and I've got void packages. So let's go ahead and uh, clear the screen. And what we're going to do now is we are going to actually take and do a cd into void packages, and we are going to do... Um, a dot slash xbps dash src and we're going to do binary dash bootstrap and we're going to hit enter and it's going to take some time to go through this this is again another long process that's going to take some time so i am going to uh, pause the video again and we'll be back with you as soon as it's done all right all right now that that has completed successfully uh, we can go ahead and clear the screen and we can uh, run through and do some stuff with our uh, Hyperland void template. So let's go ahead and cd dot dot. And if I do an ls, we're back in our packages directory and we can see we got that Hyperland void. So let's cd into Hyperland void. Uh, let's go ahead and clear the screen. Now we need to do a little bit of moving of files here. So let's do a um, cat and we are going to do the, um, what was it? The common sh libs. Um, yeah, and we want to direct that into our home.local uh, pkgs uh, void packages common sh libs. Um, so we want to cat that over there, and that's done. And now let's go ahead and clear the screen. And so now what we want to do is we want to do a cp r and we want to do src packages, and we're going to do star because we want all of them. And we want to put them in home.local uh, pkgs uh, void packages and uh, source packages. So that's going to copy all of those over to the source packages. Um, and after that, we need to do a xb, or actually, no, excuse me, a dot slash xbps dash src pkg and we're going to do hyperland and this should now build hyperland for us um, no nope, no such file or directory but i know exactly what happened so let's cd into our source packages uh, actually no what i need to do is i need to cd dot dot and i need to cd space dot dot <laughs> i need to cd space dot dot again and i need to cd into void packages not hyperland packages so now if we run the xbps source package hyperland and hit enter now we're going to go ahead and build it you know just got to be in the correct directory sometimes that's uh that's all it takes so this is going to take a second to build um again i'm going to put you on pause and when it's done building i will be back with you and we will continue on with the install all right okay there we go so now that we have that one done let's go ahead and do the other long one so i can hopefully be done pausing for a little bit so we're just going to press up and we are going to do uh slash or dot slash xbps dash source package and we're going to do xdg dash desktop dash portal 
dash hyperland. And so this is going to take a little while to do this one too. So again, um, I'm going to pause while this is building and I'll be back with you shortly. All right, so that took a long time. Um, that was down for uh, quite a bit, a lot longer than it has before, but I think it's just the crappy internet I have at the moment. So um, we have one last package to build out of this. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and we're just going to press up and we're going to press up again and we are going to do hyperland-proto-calls. So we've done Hyperland, XDG Desktop Portal, and now we're going to do uh, Hyperland Protocols. So let's go ahead and hit enter. This should build, rel build relatively quickly, so I'm not going to go ahead and pause the video at this point, um, unless it seems like it's going to uh, pause and take a while. So um, let's go ahead and see. No, it seems to be moving pretty quick. So no, oh, there you go. Perfectly uh, ready to go. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. And now that we have those built, we need to go ahead and install them. So let's do a sudo xbps dash install. Um, and then we need to do, what is it? It's I'm trying to remember here. Um, xbps install uh, dash capital R. Um, yeah. Um, and then hoster uh, bind packages and then Hyperland. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that and enter our password. And we are now gonna go ahead and install. So this should just take a few seconds here and we should be good to go. Um, and then we're gonna do the XDG desktop portal Hyperland and we're gonna do Hyperland protocols. And then we can get a few more things installed that we installed and we should be ready to go. So let's clear the screen. We're gonna press up again. We're gonna do Hyperland dash protocols now and hit enter. Um, yes, we want to. Uh, that one's done already, so let's clear the screen. Um, and we are now gonna do um, xdg-desktop-portal-hyperland. I apologize, I'm, uh, I'm a little tired, so my typing and my speaking might be a little off, but you know, hey, that's life. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click yes. Now this might take a little bit of time, I'm not positive, so if it seems like it's gonna drag on, I will pause again, but um, I'm hoping not. Um, now I was telling you before that uh, normally I have Xorg, the entire package installed on this, uh, on my system because I have X11 window managers and I have other stuff that use it. Um, I have never tried installing this without installing Xorg. So what we're gonna do this time is I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to do this without installing Xorg. I should just need the Mesa DRI uh, package and I should be good to go. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and give that a shot first. If not, then I'm not gonna sit here and fuss around with it. I'm just gonna install the Xorg package because um, I know for a fact that works and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and give the old college a try. I'm just using uh, Mesa DRI and um, a few other packages and we'll see what happens. Um, so we've got about 94% left. So this is actually moving pretty quickly. So that's good. Um, and we're done with that. So let's go ahead and clear the screen. So now we have uh, void installed. We have our source packages installed. We have the Hyperland void template installed and all the packages that we need installed out of that. Uh, now we need to get a few packages installed from XBPS. So let's go ahead and do sudo XBPS dash install. And we're gonna need dbus. We're gonna need seat uh, D. We're gonna need pull kit. Um, we are going to need elogin. Uh, e login D, excuse me. Um, so dbus cd pull kit e login D. Um, sorry, I got to think here. What uh, uh, what else we might need? Um, uh, I usually use SDDM, but we're not going to do SDDM this time. Um, let's go ahead and <sighs> I think that's it. And then let's just do Mesa DRI. Um, so dbus cd pull kit elogany missing so we should be good there so let's go ahead and hit enter um, let's go ahead and install these uh, pull kits already installed it was pulled in as a dependency but we're gonna go ahead and click yes we're gonna hit enter we're gonna install this stuff um, i'm not quite sure how long this is going to take i've never tried to just install the mesa dri package um, the other ones don't really take all that long so uh, we'll just see if mesa slows it down a bit but um, it's moving okay speed 
Um, but again, if this doesn't work, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Just install the whole XORG package because I know it will work with that. Um, if you want to then fumble around and figure out what you actually need and don't need out of that, then um, I'll leave that up to you. But um, this will at least for sure get a Hyperland instance up and going. So we're at about 75% now, so we should be uh, moving along pretty quickly and uh, we should be able to get some services started. Um, and assign ourselves to a one more group that isn't uh, an option in the uh, uh, void install instance and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and clear the screen and let's go ahead and start some services. So we're gonna do sudo ln-s <clears throat> and we're gonna do etc sv and we need to start dbus. So we're gonna link that to var slash service and hit enter. Uh, we need to start pull kit. So we are gonna do pull kit D and we need to start seat D so we are going to start seat D and we need to assign ourselves to the seat group so let's just do sudo user mod dash a capital G and we're going to do underscore seat D Jake you would use your username there but uh, that should be that um, and at this point now I'm going to go ahead and do a reboot real quick and you don't really have to um, but Considering this is a brand new VM, we've just installed fresh, we've done all this other stuff, I wanna just reboot before I uh, do anything. So we're gonna do a sudo reboot, and we're gonna give it a second here to reboot for us, and then we will see if we have a Hyperland, uh, a working Hyperland instance. Again, if it doesn't work, I might have to install the whole XORG package, but we'll just have to see. So let's give it our uh, username and our super secret password. Uh, let's clear the screen, um, and Let's set font uh, dash D. So that's gonna give us some nice font you can see and we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot here. So now if I type Hyperland, um, let's see if we get some errors or if we actually log in. There we go. We have a working Hyperland instance. So uh, what I need to do is I need to press the, uh, I believe it's super M is going to log us out of that. I'm gonna clear the screen. In a VM, the animations are horrible. They slow everything down, they make it look bad. So I'm actually going to go in and I'm gonna edit the configuration file to turn off animations real quick so I can just show you that everything's working. So we're gonna cd into dot config. We are gonna cd into hyper. And if I do an ls, you can see we've got hyperland.conf. So we've installed vim, we're gonna vim into hyperland.conf. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to comment out the auto-generated warning that comes up across the top. And then I am going to search for animations. And where it says enabled, I'm gonna change that to yes. You don't need to do this if you are installing it on hardware because you should be fine. Um, but I am just doing it so that way I don't have to show you a leggy, nasty, horrible um, instance of Hyperland. But I will say what's gonna happen when I launch it again, since it has that nice fade in animation normally, it's gonna take a second to launch. So let's go ahead and do Hyperland and hit enter. And you can see it's taken a second um, because it doesn't give me that nice animation or anything like that. But now we are up and ready to go. And I did install Kitty, so if I do, um, if I do Super Q, I believe is launch Kitty, um, that should give me a Kitty instance, um, maybe. Again, the animations turned off and being a VM kind of makes things a little weird. Um, maybe not. Um, I'm sure I had Kitty installed, but uh, let's do Super M again and log out of there. Let's clear the screen. Uh, let's do an LS, we're in Hyperland, so let's vim into hyperland.conf again um, and make sure that I am correct on my key bindings. So let's search for Kitty. Um, next, 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 um, yeah, super Q. So let's change the main mod. Now let's leave it at super. Um, and it's gonna be Q. So it should launch kitty. So let's go ahead and write and quit. Let's do a sudo xbps dash install kitty and make sure I do have it installed. I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, it's already installed. So it's just being really laggy um, considering that it is a virtual machine. Um, I noticed that before stuff doesn't really work. Even when I turn off the animations, it's really laggy still. Um, I could probably do some, some something with my settings in my virtual machine, um, but I don't really feel that I 
need to do that because it's a virtual machine and I'm not going to use it any longer after this probably but um, we do have Hyperland up and going and let's do Super Q again and see what happens um, see if I can get an instance of Kitty to launch um, it might not um, yeah, I don't think it wants to launch for me um, but I will tell you this is the way I installed it on my system and if we actually go over to Workspace 4, you can see I'm running Hyperland, obviously, right now. So um, it does work, and everything is great Run, uh, running Hyperland on Void Linux. Uh, so that's about how you go about doing it. Um, again, the only problem we're having right now is the fact that I am in a um, virtual machine. Um, let's actually try something real quick. Let's see if it's something with the Kitty emulator. So let's go ahead and uh, do Super M. And let's clear the screen and let's do sudo xbps dash install alacrity. Yes, uh, so this will install alacrity for me real quick. Um, let's vim into hyperland.conf um, and let's actually change this to alacrity. Um, it might be because they are GPU accelerated but I don't think that should be an issue but let's go ahead and change this to um, see if we just can't happen to get something running here so we're now going to give it a second here to launch hyperland again for us and as soon as it does I will give super return a try with alacrity and it just doesn't seem to want to work for me right now um, but i will tell you it does work obviously because it works on my regular system um, and i just don't really have the time to sit here and figure out why it is not uh, wanting to launch my terminal in the virtual machine um, but it does uh, it does launch uh, terminals it does launch windows and everything and um, i can actually let's let's do this let's uh do super M again. Uh, let's do clear the screen and we'll do, um, let's try alacrity. Okay, so um, that's why, because I need, let's do this uh, sudo uh, xbps dash install foot and click yes. Uh, let's vim into hyperland.conf and let's search for alacrity. Well, let's put this back to Q real quick. And instead of Alacrity, let's do Foot. Foot is a Wayland um, terminal emulator, and so let's just have let's just see if that changes anything. Hyperland. Okay. So we're gonna give this one more shot and see if we can't get this uh, to launch a terminal, so I can prove to you that it does actually work. Um, and if not, I guess you'll just have to take my word for it, <laughs> considering I'm running it on my personal machine and it works like a dream. Um, so let's go ahead and try uh, Super Q again. And it is not wanting to work even with foot. So I don't know what the deal is. Um, but anyway, it does, uh, again, I do say it, it does work uh, because um, if you happen to notice that on my personal machine, all my stuff launches and I installed it exactly the same way as I did there, except for the fact that I didn't install XOR. So um, that's that. It gets it up and going um, and it should give you enough to be able to start tinkering around with and get your hyperlens set up on Void just the way you like it. So that being said, um, I'm going to be done for the evening. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, a great rest of your week. And, uh, you know, just kind of keep an uh, keep eye out for future videos coming out on more Void content. So, um, and not necessarily just Void content either, but uh, Void is going to be home again for a while. And uh, so we're going we're gonna to be doing some serious Void digging in. All right. So you guys have a great rest of your week. God bless.